To understand descriptive statistics, let us consider this question. We're talking about a website which goes ahead and which gives information about the charitable organizations. And there are many small charities that come on the screen that this is the charity that took place. Some charities operate very efficiently with fundraising and administrative expenses. Whereas others spend a high percentage of what they take in on such activities. Now, let's see what this data is about. This data is on fundraising expenses as a percentage of the total expenses. So how many are, how much money is required to raise the funds divided by what is the total expenditure undertaken for 60 charities. Now, if I only give you this data, then you can see that it is very difficult to understand this data. It is very difficult to concentrate on any value of the data. It's very difficult to understand what's the average value. It's very difficult to understand how dispersed the data is. But supposedly, I go ahead and I give you a table like this, or I give you a graph like this, where I make fundraising here and the frequency here. And I will tell you that the fundraising that, you know, the amount of funds raised between zero to 10 have a frequency of more than 30, more than 30 percent of the total population or more than 30 people go ahead and give, you know, they, they go ahead and give a charity of zero to 10. And then I tell you between 10 to 20, it is maybe if here I have 20. So it is a little less than 20. And then I tell you that between 20 to 30, if I take 10 here, it is very less, maybe somewhere over here. And then I tell you that, you know, if I take some lesser amount, maybe around five, between 30 to 40 and between 40 to 50 also it is 5. Nobody gives 50 to 60, 60 to 70 and then again between maybe 80 to 90 some people give funds. When I make a graph like this, a histogram like this, then you know I am able to interpret this data in a much better sense. I'm able to understand which of the charities, uh, how much of the fundraising takes place. So in that sense, I am able to understand the data better. Now, based on exactly this, we have another discipline of statistics, which is known as inferential statistics. What is inferential statistics? Inferential statistics is basically, let's write down first and then I'll explain. It is a technique for generating generalizations from a sample. To a population. That is known as inferential statistic. Let me explain you what this means. So, for example, I tell you that, you know, this was the entire population. My population supposedly is 10,000 people. These are the people who gave votes. 
it was very difficult to go ahead and collect vote of all these 10,000 people. So what I indeed did is I created a smaller sample, a subset of this population. In this sample, I just had 4,000 people or maybe just 400 people. I went to 400 people and I asked them, whom did you vote for? And based on what these 400 people told me, they said that, you know, we vote, you know, out of these 400 people, there were 280 people who voted for party A and the remaining 120 people voted for party B. So, you know, we were able to tell how many people voted for party A and how many people voted for party B. So approximately 70% uh, of the people voted for party A and remaining 30% of the people voted for the other party. This is something that happened in the sample. But if based on what happened in the sample, I am able to go ahead and infer about the population, I generalized this result and I said that, okay, although I made this estimate for the sample, but this also holds for the population that even in the population, 70% voted for party A, 30% voted for party B, and that is inferential statistics. Okay, so basically, what is inferential? Inferential comes from the word infer. So I am inferring about the population. I am telling things about the population based on the sample. When I infer about population based on sample, that is known as inferential statistics. So as the name suggests, you are inferring. You just collected information about these 400 people. And based on the information you gained about these 400 people, you understood that within these 400 people, 70% of the people voted for party A and 30% of the people voted for party B. But based on this, you are able to go ahead and tell things about the population. That even in population, it might have happened that 70% would have voted for party A and 30% for party B. You're generalizing the results to the population, then that is inferential statistics. Let's take another question. So here we are going ahead and talking about uh, the material strength investigations provide a rich area of application for statistical methods. The article, Effects of Aggregate and Microfillers, reported on a study strength properties of high performance concentrate obtained by super plasticizers and certain binders. Now let's go ahead and see what this information is about. The accompanying data on flexural strength appeared in this article. So this is about the strength. And what is the strength? Basically, the comprehensive strength of concentrate is known as the fractural strength, which means which is the, what is the ability of uh, it to resist failure in bending. So this is the strength that is given to us. Now, supposedly this strength is given to us and based on this strength, which is obviously created based on the sample. These are the some, these are some of the samples that were created and the strength was recorded. Suppose you want an estimate of average value for all the beams that could have been made this way. Now, remember, this is a sample, but based on what happened in the sample and whether it could bend much, it could not bend much, whether there was failure in bending or not, I want to create an information about the population. I want to understand whether in the population, what would be the strength. So whenever I infer information from sample to population, 
in order to do that you generate something which is known as an estimate you want an estimate estimate can be of mean estimate can be of standard deviation estimate can be of anything but by estimate i mean that i need some number for the population based on what is happening in the sample and not only that we also want to go ahead and we want an information about something which is known as the confidence interval and the prediction bound this is something which are individual chapters upon which we will go ahead and focus but here what we are trying to go ahead and say is that based on the information within the sample we can try and see and you know we can be confident enough that i am so and so percent confident that whatever information i have gained for, from the sample actually belongs to the population when we do that that is a part of inferential statistics so to summarize what really happens here and what is the relationship between probability and inferential statistics i have a population at disposal based on the population i have to go ahead and i have to collect a sample the sample will not have all the elements sample will have only some of the elements from the population which elements the sample will have will be you know you can count those based on probability so you will use probability to pick up some numbers from the whole population right you will use probability to pick up some numbers to pick up a sample from the pop population now initially obviously each individual in the sample should have an equal chance of getting selected in the sample so each individual in the population should have equal chance of getting selected it's a random selection now once this has been done and once this sample has been created then we infer everything about the sample like for example once we had those 400 individuals with us we went ahead and we inferred different things who is the individual going to vote for what is going to happen what is not going to happen so we infer different things and based on whatever we collect whatever information we collect in the sample we take it back to the population and we do inferential statistics so once we have the sample with us and we have found out the average of the sample the standard deviation of the sample different things of the sample we can use that information to infer different things about the population